Hello. I'd like to say thanks for um, all the new subs and all the thumbs up and comments. Um, that really helps with the algorithms. So I want to say thanks. So, <clears throat> pretty much uh, our entire childhood, we lived within a certain proximity of a major body of water. And uh, Dad loved fishing, dude. Uh, Dad loved fishing. Uh, he'd, uh, he'd go saltwater fishing. He'd go freshwater fishing, pond fishing, creek fishing, uh, lake fishing, cat fishing, it didn't matter, that, he, he loved fishing. Um, <clears throat> he'd caught some, some citation worthy fish and had, had some mounted and uh, he had participated in what they called the last uh, great run of uh, bluefish back in the day it was like back in like the, the 80s um, it was like the gra the last great run of these these larger fish you know he, he participated in that and, um, and ever since I can remember though we we were fishing man and like back in the day like our, our OG uh, fishing rods wasn't even fishing rods man like dad dad had taught us how to fish with a can uh, all you needed was a, a soda can now back in the 80s man soda cans were a little bit stronger I will admit uh, than these uh, recycled flimsy uh, bare minimum cans nowadays but uh, <clears throat> he showed us how to go fishing with a can and you would tie the the string off to the soda tab you know the pool tab on top and you'd wrap the line around the can you know but you'd tie it off to the pool tab and you'd wrap you know 10 or 15 yards of string around that can uh, and you'd hold it with your finger you know now he'd put a piece of duct tape down there um, so if you weren't fishing with it you'd put the little duct tape over it but then you tie your, your sinker and your bobber and your hook on the end of the string, you know. And when you go to cast it, you hold your finger on the can, right? And you, you're holding the, the bobber and all that in your other hand. And you, you swing it out there with your other hand. <clears throat> and when you let go of the bobber, you lift your thumb up and the string spools off the tip of the can. You aim the can towards the, uh, the bobber as it's going out. And then, of course, you grab the string with your thumb when it's out far enough. So that's how you fish. That's how you cast with a can. And then, of course, you sit there and you, you roll the can to reel it back in, you know. And you'd watch your bobber and bobber go down, you know. You, you kind of, like, pull the can. You have one side of the can in each hand, you know. And your bobber, your bobber would go down and you'd pull that can to you, kind of like a, um, if you had like a, a Wiimote steering wheel, you know, and you're trying to get your, uh, and you're playing Mario Kart and you're trying to get your, um, your cart to do a wheelie or whatever, you know, you pop that steering wheel, it'd be the same thing fishing with the can, you know, you'd pop that fishing can to set the hook. And then you would reel it in, you know. If the fish was small enough, you could just reel it in, uh, like you were winding up a kite string. But uh, if it was a large enough fish, you'd have to reel it in. And uh, I remember catching fish that just crushed the can and jerked it out of your hand, you know. Um, so really, you were hoping for a smaller fish, and that's what we wound up because if you caught a bigger fish and it crushed the can or jerked it out of your hand then you didn't have anything to fish with 
you know so inherently after a couple times of that happening you kind of wanted to catch the smaller fish they they were still fun to to uh catch but they didn't mean that you you lost your your fishing rod you know your fishing can um <clears throat> and i mean another thing dude like we were like three i was three or four ish maybe five i was not any older than five uh and i have these memories of going out on these uh, uh the river we used to go fishing in they had these uh, lockers because there was a canal that ran next to it and they had these lock gates and ponds where they would shift the water from the the uh, river to increase and decrease the level in these ponds and they had all these uh walls around them dude and like we're like five years old sitting out on these walls and like you got water i remember dude you had water you had to walk out to get to these points and we would be sitting there fishing and you had the water right in front of you and then you turn around and it was like a 20 foot drop to nothing behind you and it was like down in the bottom of that was like water that hasn't moved and since they used the the lock gates you know it was like it just looked nasty and scary uh, as a memory you know but it was like you know we would fish off that i remember this one uh where about 30 feet out from this concrete pylon that we're sitting on uh, the water is black as night uh, catching a fish out of it was scary because they came out of the darkness as a as like a golden flash and uh, out in this water about 30 feet from where we're sitting is this giant whirlpool where dad said if we fall in we're gonna die <laughs> If we fell in, we were going to die, and that whirlpool would, would suck us down, and we'd never be seen again, you know, and we're like, what? And we're sitting here fishing, and I, like, I I didn't even want to catch a fish, man. I just wanted to get off and get away from the whirlpool of death, you know, but <laughs> uh, we always went fishing, man, and so on. The, I'm saying all this because, uh, dad enjoyed taking us fish and it was an outside activity and in this river was this it, it had this huge island dude um, we'd always go down to the river because we lived in this old railroad station uh, it's been tore down but this old railroad station was like from the uh, from the 1800s and um, <clears throat> It had these wide, like super wide stairs, and it had sidewalks and everything that went out to the the railroad tracks where people would be picked up and dropped off. And it was where people would stay. You know, it had a bunch of uh, bedrooms in it, and it was a uh, it had a wraparound balcony and wraparound porch, and uh, it sat on the edge of this hill in this valley. You know. It was kind of like the old school western frontier um, before you went up into the, the Cumberland uh, Valley Gap and all that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but we lived there uh, and that, you know, it was right off of uh, the river and so we always went down to the river in the canal and we'd walk up and down the canal and all that um, uh, so one time dad's like you know he's gonna take all of us kids camping on this island um, I think he had he had camped there with his friends and um uh, Usually the weekend would consist of dad going fishing with his friends friends, and bringing back a bunch of whatever it was, you know, whether it was uh, saltwater fish or freshwater fish or if they went hunting, you know, it'd be meat of some sort, you know. It just depended on what time of year it was and all that. So 
um, I'm pretty sure how it went down was he had went camping there or had been camping on this island multiple times uh, with his friends so us as kids were like we want to go we want to go we want to go you know all the time so uh, this was the weekend that dad was finally going to take us kids and uh, we had packed up he showed us how to do all kinds of neat stuff dude um, how to roll our, our shirts and stuff up to save room and all this stuff but uh, the river this was above the Piedmont um, uh, this was where the river was uh, it, it did have some speed but it wasn't you know it wasn't really wide wide it was maybe uh, 200 300 yards wide um, but it was really rocky and it had this this island held together over the millions of years this river <clears throat> has been carving its way through these the Appalachian Mountains <clears throat> this island has held itself together uh, this island was well I've looked it up on Google uh, 50 yards by 300 yards you know and it gets wider in some areas and all that stuff and it fingers out and it has like little lagoons where the water slows and but it's got woods and all that stuff on it and where we were gonna stay we were gonna stay up on the western point where the river is actually split from the island you know <clears throat> And half the river goes one way and half the river goes the other way and it that island splits the river for about 300 yards <clears throat> and we had walked up in there early day you know and uh, we, he had this old World War II military tent canvas like this green heavy canvas and it had this uh, the center I remember it had this like center post and about five feet up it had these metal posts that stuck out and held the uh, the canvas up so it looked kind of like a circus tent you know you had the center point and then you had like four or five other points uh, and then the tent kind of dropped off from there and it did not have a floor in it uh, it was a heavy canvas military tent with no floor so you had to bring enough stuff to build up the floor to lay on <clears throat> so we had set set up the military and he had done this uh, camouflage job on it uh, dad was a uh, little side story dude dad was pretty known pretty well known for his camo jobs because uh this would have been back in the 80s he uh he had this van like a team style van and he had taken the local leaves of the trees and everything he got the local leaves uh, and the local like colors like the golds and the, the greens and the browns and he kind of matched it up with spray paint and he took the local leaves and he spray painted the local leaf patterns all over his van in this like basically OG uh, mossy oak looking camouflage and this is back in the early 80s uh, and he had just did this I remember he he had done that he had a bunch of his friends over and they were doing this and they were like man this is awesome you know and we were in town <clears throat> at like the grocery store and uh, I remember we came out and dad was gone you know and he showed up later and he I remember him him explaining to mom that um because where we lived was kind of a military active area they had some of these you know site X or whatever up on the uh, on the mountaintop things uh, you know nobody talks about <laughs> but um, these these dudes in these Humvees rolled up into this town we lived in 
uh, and liked dad's camouflage so so much that they had him go out in these apple orchards and they wanted him to sit in these fields while they drove by and did these different uh, uh, kind of like drive-by fly-by things while taking while taking pictures and they they had him move around and do this in like four or five different areas uh, and you know they said thank you and all that stuff and they actually bought fuel they paid for gas in his uh in the van you know and he explained all that you know so <clears throat> he always said the military stole his uh his camouflage idea because he had basically come up with a a uh a mossy oak looking camouflage that was particular to the region both in color and flora on on design you know instead of just back then it was like the same camouflage pattern but just variations of colors but yeah that's just a little side story so we had set up the the military tent and he had it you know camouflaged um, but <clears throat> he showed us how to uh, I remember on this this camping trip was the the camping trip he showed us how to uh, start a smokeless fire um, using like some cotton balls and some uh, Vaseline you know and he showed us how to build a smokeless fire and it's one of the memories of the evening um, other one was he had caught some uh, some largemouth bass and he had cooked them on the fire basically we we just sat around the fire being kids you know and every once in a while he would let us come over and uh, hold the fishing rod when he's fighting a good fish he'd be like here here and we'd get to hold the rod and reel it a little bit you know but we were like we weren't that old <clears throat> so um, we're out there on the island the sun's done went down um, we're camping basically the sounds of the night the Appalachians have, have settled in um, I couldn't couldn't tell you what we were doing but it was basically the only sound you heard was uh, the river and the night you know you had owls doing their thing and the stars were out um, I, I can't remember if the moon was up or nothing so it was it was several hours after dark uh, like I believe one or two of us had already laid down to go to sleep and uh, we started hearing this this like barking um, I didn't have anything to, to compare it to uh, back then um, we basically repeated what we were told it was which was dogs barking um, but as a memory the the barking sounds I remember hearing um, could be compared to like the the velociraptor in Jurassic Park it had that that windy uh, chomp bark to it like it wasn't a dog bark it had like this this windy snap bark to it so it was like me and one other brother were still up and dad is fishing and <clears throat> if you're sitting there on the island um, looking off west it would have been on the right so it would have been on the uh, the northern side of the river you heard like you know one of those raptor barks and um, I remember I remember the bark I remember dad's reaction was you know he goes shh, 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 shh. He, he made the, the hush sound like 
five, ten times repeatedly. <clears throat> you know, and it was like everything responded to him or it doing that because it was like everything got quiet except the uh, the river. And it was like the only clear sound following that bark was the uh, the river. And uh, so we're sitting there in silence, fire crackling, river gurgling. Uh, just heard the bark. The dad had uh, quickly reeled in his his fishing bait, whatever he was fishing. He quickly reeled that in, and he just standing there still. And we're staring at him, and he's staring away from us towards the direction he heard the bark. And uh, it did it again. second time you know it was scarier you know um, and, and it like made dad hunker down and like uh, hold his fishing rod out towards us with his his fingers up you know like telling us not to move or nothing you know and uh, that that moment lasted a pretty good amount of time it felt like um, I remember you know looking at dad looking at the the rod and the reel looking at the fire and then we heard the same type bark uh, come from the island it sounded like the other side of the island you know the, the east side uh, but it was on the island you know and dad like snapped around you know and now you see him looking past us across us you know and, and the fire where we're sitting the fire is like between us and dad so now instead of us seeing the back of dad dad's looking past us into the darkness and he says start packing he whispered that you know start packing um and i mean we're we're kids i don't I couldn't tell you what we did as far as packing up. There wasn't much we could do. It was kind of like a, it was kind of like a placebo, maybe you know, because he did most of the packing. I remember waking up uh, my sister and I couldn't tell you which one of the brothers, but we woke him up, and they were loud for a second, and and Dad was like, you know, shh 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 shh. Sh. And they were like, what's going on? And, and we were like, you know, there's some dogs. There's big dogs around us. We got to go. <clears throat> and we... I remember Dad, like, breaking down the tent and doing all this stuff and rolling these things up and putting them in five-gallon buckets and these coolers and everything. And he had went over and gotten, like, a 10-foot-long piece of uh, driftwood. And uh, I remember when... When he got that driftwood by the water, uh, we heard another bark. And uh, those like upset my sister. So my dad had to like calm her down and say, you know, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and it's gonna be like a water slide, you know, to make her excited, you know. And it's like, um, the the bark that was on the island you could tell had moved a lot closer and i mean you know i was young but i could feel the the i could feel the stress that my dad was uh going through um like you know you could tell he was concerned you know and we had to do what he was asking you know what i mean i don't know i could it it felt like it was very important for us to do exactly what we were told and um, he had taken this like boat rope this white rope um, I remember the, the white rope buckets the cooler and the log and he tied all of it like around his uh, his waist he had made a torch also uh, he had made a torch from like a shirt and like Vaseline he had this really like I remember thinking you know caveman torch 
like the stick was all rugged looking and it had this huge ball of flame on it and he had uh he had put out the he had packed up camp put out the fire told us all no matter what hold on to this log because to, to get off this island we had to go down this river about a uh, half a mile and cross it and then go over by the canal you know and get out of there um, and he had us hold on to this log and it was like the the most i remember that the most out of anything um uh, he he took all of us kids on this log down this river in the middle of the night with this torch and everything the whole camp packed up in these buckets in this cooler <clears throat> and we heard the dogs bark again it was like the last time i heard the dogs barking was as we were getting in the river because then all i remember is the sounds of the river holding on to this log and he constantly was making sure everybody was holding on to the log and we 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 rode that log through the river in the dark um, and he managed to find the exit you know on the other side and get us all across using that log and, and we got out of there that night you know and uh that log ride was we were we were gripped with fear from why we had to leave you know but that log ride was so fun uh that when we went back it was something we always tried to do uh, at the river and it actually kind of would upset dad because you know if he brung us down to the river he don't want us to drag out a log and get on it and just ride down the river to nowhere like you know he wants to feel like we're safe <laughs> so um he had to kind of if we did that we had to do it in certain areas because uh, he also he didn't want us disturbing the fishing environment by going upstream and tearing out these wood like tearing these logs out and throwing them in the water and making it all dirty you know so it was kind of like a bad habit that formed because of how fun that that was that night but um, the reason we had to get on that log was uh it was one of fear I do remember that so yeah uh, there's that